Hello there guys and welcome to another episode of Evident Design. Um, I've just moved back to my old hometown in Sweden, Gothenburg, and it feels really good to be here. Uh, I, have a new, I have a new apartment here and um, yeah, you're gonna be seeing this, uh, this apartment more and more with, with my new videos, a bunch of instruments everywhere, because <laughs> I'm a composer as well, so yeah, that's why there's a bunch of stuff around. So today we're gonna be looking at uh, matte painting and I'm gonna give you a sort of an intro to what matte painting is and um, we're gonna be creating a matte painting from from scratch from the beginning to the end so we're gonna look at the entire process I guess um, it's gonna be a pretty long video so I hope you you can uh, stay with me all the way hope you learn something so yeah let's get right into it All right then, today we're going to be creating this matte painting that you see right here in front of you. Uh, we'll start off by looking at what matte painting actually is, and also I'll show you a few examples of what I've done in the past using matte painting techniques. So matte paintings are photorealistic landscape and uh, environment paintings. It uh, combines um, regular painting with brushes and tools together with photo manipulation. And this makes this technique very useful for productions such as uh, TV shows, movies, games, and so on. Because it allows you to create backgrounds that look extremely realistic since you're using photo elements in your paintings. Now, this is quite a different technique from just basic photo manipulation because you're applying traditional painting techniques on there and um, you're blending together photo elements with, uh, with brushes and tools uh, using your, your painting skills. And Sometimes the painting aspect takes on a majority, where you're mostly just painting and occasionally blend in photo textures to give it that extra spice of, uh, of realism. Another thing is that uh, using photo textures speeds up your workflow when you're designing things and want to present them nice and polished. Photos carry with them a lot of details, so they help out render your painting effortlessly. However, it, sh it shouldn't be why you do matte paintings. Here I have a few examples of, um, of matte paintings that I've done. It's called Black Rise, and um, you can see here that I'm I've, I've used some some photo textures in the um, in the windows, for example, where I've blended together in a different um, layer styles. Oops, and you can see some photo textures here as well for the plates. I mean, m most of this is actually just painted, but I'm using matte painting techniques here as well. So uh, these here are from t from from photos where I've just taken like I think pinpoint uh, pin light, sorry, and um, and so on. So uh, this is, for example, just painted with lasso, and then uh, I add these these lights here and and make it look sort of uh, realistic. This one is called Eve of the Ceremony, and it was one of my f my first matte paintings. Um, most of this is actually photo textures, but all of this atmosphere here is, is painted, and these guys are here here are painted. Uh, this um, thing here I, I built in SketchUp, in Google SketchUp, and I imported it. And that's also something to keep in mind that um, um, when I say textures, I, I, I don't mean just, uh, you know, photos, I, I also mean 3D, so you can get photos from, from your 3D renderings as well, and use them in your paintings. Uh, and then behind here you can see, I think it's Fitzroy, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, a lot of this is painted, uh, if I zoom in here, where does it do that? Okay. Um, if I zoom in here, okay, it's not so great quality uh, resolution, but these things here are painted, the, the, the mountains, and uh, these guys there. And then a lot of photo textures here to make it look uh, realistic. And then this is um, uh, the moon Enceladus. Enceladus um, was inspired because I was um, studying um, astrobiology, and it is a very interesting planet, uh, moon, sorry, on Saturn. And here you can see the um, that uh, I've used a 3D model and then exported that, and rendered it out, and um, and this is just a, an actual photo of Enceladus where I've uh, blurred it and added some film grain to make it look realistic. 
and then just painted it in this um, astronaut woman here. And then I also do a lot of um, album cover art, and a lot of times the, the clients, they want to have a very re realistic look to it. So this is called a New Dawn, and this uh, spaceship here I modeled in 3D Studio Max. I rendered it out, and you can see here as well there's some photo textures. Uh, the sky is a lot of photos, but also painting of course. Uh, you can see the photos here and also the brush strokes and then we have another one here this is called cosmic power and um this you see this giant this giant um, gorilla here the company's called giant apes and therefore i've done a lot of big gorillas <laughs> um, and these spaceships are actually also models that i've um, rendered out um, and then some of these clouds are also photos uh, this guy I actually modeled in ZBrush and then I painted a bunch of stuff on him to uh, blend him in here and, um, and and so on. This one is a pretty recent uh, album cover art I did. I did. Um, here's some explosion photo textures, uh, but these like uh, smoke trails here are all painted. Um, all this stuff in front of here is painted. Most of this guy is painted. Uh, some some stuff I used for with photo textures like these uh, straps here, um, and also these um, um, the snow here. I've used some photo textures, but a lot of it is actually painted, so it, it's both at the same time. And then this one is a, a little older one where you see these giant tapes again, but they're pretty small. <laughs> um, but here I've used some. Actually, a lot of this is just very regularly painted. Uh, the sky is a photo texture, but I've blended that in. All this stuff is just painted. Uh, here you can see some, some more photo textures, and also, if I zoom in on the, on the monkey here, you see some fur textures here. And that's both, that's both uh, photo textures and me painting to, to make it look good, like on the, on the edges here. Uh, I had to paint that to, to blend that in. And then some flames here and tires and, and whatnot. So the first one I want to do is a lush green landscape with a lot of vegetation, um, like you know forests growing on hillsides, and mountains in the background, some dramatic lighting, and um, and perhaps we'll add some sci-fi element to it, um, like a high-tech mining facility or something. We'll see. Um, so we could start off with that. If I shut this down, let's just do. Uh, we can start with. The 2,000 by 1,000 and double click here and then as usual I do not like painting on on white so I bring it down a bit because then I can when I when I paint uh, lighter things it'll pop up more maybe something like that so we can start off by just sketching um, with values and then blocking in some color. So this brush pack is the Evident brush pack, which you can get. The link is in the description. So let's just use a, a regular chalk brush here. out a little bit. So now I just want to have some quick composition and I don't really care about textures or anything. Um, I actually really like the chalk brush a lot because it's quite versatile and it, it gives some texture as well. So I'm thinking like some, I don't know, mountain or, or castle or facility or something here. Like this is our main focal point. And then maybe some, um, some waterfall there, some rocks here. And then, yeah, just continue rocks off like that as well. Maybe something like that. And 
do keep in mind that uh, it's important in the beginning to have um, a good overview of your of your composition. And you can look up here in the navigator. It's very important because that, there you'll see if your composition works as a whole. Because sometimes we're going to be zooming in a bit, and um, you can you can kind of lose the scope of your of your painting that way. So yeah, don't worry about details. Uh, just painting. I have in mind a sort of um, uh, perspective where it's like this. So like uh, um, a frog's eye, you know, where, where we're looking from the ground and up. Okay. I'm just moving the microphone a bit. There we go. So I've just used some, um, a few values here, and then I'm, I'm color picking uh, by pressing Alt and just adding some interesting shapes, some rocks here. Maybe you can add a little bit brighter value here. So this would be our, our waterfall. And you can see up here, it's starting to take shape, the, the composition. But I'm feeling that this part here, uh, our focal point should be a bit more pronounced. So maybe have things pointing into it more. Um, Contrast it a bit more with the, with the foreground. Just adding some light here in the background. these together. I don't typically work in, with a lot of layers. I just usually use just one. Uh, and then I, I, I move up, you know. Uh, now I can just uh, actually pr hit free transform and, uh, and do some cool like perspective changes here and then uh, warp around a bit to get a good composition. I'm looking up here. this to be a bit taller there. I think this looks pretty good. <clears throat> okay, continue from there. So I'm thinking maybe we could have some um, uh, some vegetation here. Can use this um, soft brush here to give a sort of a vignette, darken it up here. Because I'm I'm thinking that a lot of this painting would be pretty dark, but then here uh, we would have some dramatic lighting to give a bit more, um, you know, dynamic to it. So yeah, we're just starting with this um, this uh, first initial sketch here, 
and um, and then we're gonna move on to to making it look more photorealistic and um, and finishing it finishing it off. As you see, I'm color picking a lot. And the closer something is, the the higher the contrast usually is. So, like if you see here, here's a very very dark. If I do this, like maybe the light hits here, that's okay to do because it's very close. But I can't do the same. Um, I can't do the same over here, like very high contrast like that. That that, that doesn't look like it's far away. Like if I do that, now it looks like some something hanging in the sky here. Um, so the further away something is, the, the lower the dynamic range is. So like you can see here, it's only a few um, changes in, in dynamic range up to white there. It's not it's not going to be dark here. And that's due to atmospheric um, um, haze. Maybe let's t turn this around. Oh yeah, I have... Um, a feather here. Feather makes the um, edges not sharp. So if I do this, transform, it's gonna be sharp edge. If I feather it, it's gonna be smooth it out a bit. Um, make it soft, so let's turn that one. I'm looking up here. Yeah, that might be cool. Uh, actually, let's there we go. That was pretty cool. And I want some some sharper, cooler looking rocks here. Don't make them too dark. And there's a cool way to separate these um, that I'm going to show you in a minute. It's a very, very effective way. And I'm only using the chalk brush. Okay. So now you can see that this looks kind of blended together here. Um, I could I could continue painting here. Uh, something that's cool to do is press L to get the lasso, and uh, you select where where sort of this um, you know um, how do you say where it kind of breaks off, and then because this is further way back and this is pretty pretty close, I guess. So we could do like that. like the round and then use uh, this tool here I mean uh, this brush and do a lighter color maybe something like that not pure white actually let's use some some cloud brush here uh, maybe yeah this one no it's too yeah this one's good and it's a bit too too bright so See, now I've uh, created some some separation here. And Control D to deselect. You see how, how I've created some separation there. Um, okay, I think I think it's it's, it's kind of a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, rocks. So maybe give this part a little bit more presence. A bit more perspective to make it look bigger. Yeah, okay, that's good. We're getting to the matte painting part, I, I guarantee you. <laughs> Promise. Yeah, this is this is the part of, of painting too, uh, matte painting. It's it's not only photos. 
You know, people think that um, because your paintings are photorealistic, you don't do any actual painting or something, but that's not true. Maybe... No. I want this to be more open here. Excuse the noise in the background there. Uh, I just moved to this uh, very central place in Sweden, and in Gothenburg, Sweden. Okay, let's work a bit on this part here. Hey, this looks like some rock is like floating here, some broken off piece. Maybe we can, we can do something like this. It can be cool. But that's been done so many times though. Yeah, let's not do that. I'm not quite sure what this will be yet. Um, I'm just doing like a regular sort of mountain right now. Maybe we can have some... or something here. That looks cool. Now, it's good to flip the screen. Um, and I have that key binded to um, uh, control H and that gives me instantly some some good um, you know it, it tells me if something is off with the composition and it, it makes me see mistakes because if, if I've been painting like this all the time uh, which means that um, my eyes have been become used to to it so if I do that I can see more uh, the issues that I'm having same technique that we did before. Separate these parts here. Um, perhaps this too. Can just use a regular soft brush here. Okay, so 
now I just kind of want to see uh, if I can get some happy accidents with the um, with the photos. If I if I start to uh, import some photos in here, see maybe maybe I can find something with um, with a waterfall. I just warp it to fit my image. Uh, I should have. Uh, oh yeah, I can. Nice. Photoshop for the win. Let's see where it's right there. Okay. Okay, let's try that. And then take it up. Uh, Control R to rasterize. And then I can start removing. Things I don't want here. It's mostly just the waterfall that I want, but. Um, so this is one technique where I just put in the photo. And then decide what to do with it afterwards. So now I'm just uh, erasing whatever I don't want there. Let's see. Okay, it goes down there. Okay, so, um, and then, um, change the color a bit. I want it to be a bit, a bit more green. Give this some color here. Um, want it to be a lush. some other sort of um, <clears throat> rock texture here. And then just blend in. So I see these rocks here. You can blend in the trees with them a bit. <clears throat> so there's a rock right there that we painted in. And now I can color pick from this. That's a big advantage of getting photos in your in your paintings. You could color pick and then get a bunch of photo uh, colors, make it look natural, and then maybe add some bit more uh, brown. Yeah, not too saturated. Check out my tutorial on how to make, uh, how to paint rocks. It's on the Evident website or the YouTube channel. Yeah, matches up good too. It's very important to have, or not very important, but it's quite important to have uh, the proper perspective of your, of your photos. That really helps sell it. And it's rasterize. Uh, lasso can cut out here. All right, let's see. It's too bright. And the light is also pretty good that it comes.
comes from there and then casts a shadow to the left. saturated and red uh -huh. yeah I think that's better release the um, decrease the saturation a bit um, opacity a bit straight on this oh actually it's 65% so um, could just combine them right now these two and start painting on there Some more vegetation here, so um, and actually maybe make it a bit darker to fit this using the burn tool mid tones. Can do some shadows. Oh, too dark there. back and forth to see what I can do now. Flip the screen. So there's a rock here. So we can maybe It's okay if you don't follow your initial sketch uh, perfectly. You can just do approximately. Because you get new ideas when you import more photos. Let's see what I had my initial sketch. Rasterize, and a pretty cool thing that you can do is um, having this selected here. You can go up to um, Image Adjustments and Match Color. It's a pretty good uh, um, effect that you can do, where you take the source, which is our file here, and then which layer you want to make this layer here to to match in the colors. So let's say we want to match with the background here. Now I can change the luminance, maybe decrease the color intensity. I can fade it out a bit to make it look like the original a bit more. Yeah, maybe like that. And I think a bit brighter. I'm not really liking how it looks there, so maybe change around a little bit like it. Let's remove some of this other stuff around here. Okay, guys. Um, I decided to speed up the um, uh, the, the walkthrough because it's it's quite a long it's quite a long walkthrough, and I thought it's it's better to just you know I can talk over it instead. It's sped up maybe two and a half times, I think. This entire process took about, uh, I think, three, three and a half hours, 
maybe four hours uh, all, all in all. And um, I mean, it's just a tutorial, so I don't, I, I didn't spend enough time that, you know, that I, that I usually would do for, for matte paintings. They usually take up to, I'd say a few days even, to get like really good, but uh, but yeah, this is just a, something to to show you guys how to uh, create your own matte paintings. So what I'm doing now is just creating some separation. I'm using the the cloud brush, and I typically use that or a regular soft brush. And I, I use um, a lasso, typically with uh, a, a little bit of a feather. I use a little bit too much there on the on the left uh, cliff there. Uh, too much feathering, but yeah, I'll fix that later. I want to change out the sky, right? Um, I want to add in some some good sky and just changing up the color first of all the, on the layer under it, and now I'm just searching for some good skies. And decided for a sunset type look because I'm thinking this is uh, at sunset time and the light would shine in from from behind there. So I'm just cutting out the silhouette of um, of the mountains and everything, and I'm gonna use that uh, selection to select the sky here and kind of mask it out or cut it out like that. Uh, and you can see that it's it's too bright the the um, the foreground, or I guess the, the, the mountains are too bright. Uh, so, so I have to fix that up, make it darker, and then make the sky a bit brighter. It's important to do that, otherwise it looks very unnatural, like it does right now. And as it goes, the, the matte painting, as it progresses, I mean, I, I, I only... Um, how should I explain it? I, I just jump back and forth really be between what I'm doing at the time. Sometimes I'm, I'm pushing things back like I'm doing now with the soft brush. Uh, sometimes I'm just doing photos. Sometimes I'm remaking everything with the design, uh, fixing up lighting and so on. So it's just what you feel like, I guess. There's no perfect process. The best process actually is just the one that you feel most comfortable with. So now I'm just using linear dodge uh, layer together with the linear dodge uh, brush setting, uh, creating some some backlight there, and then doing this sort of um, yeah you can see the line there uh, of the light it creates very interesting dramatic lighting, and I I love doing that in my paintings. I think it it um, creates really cool effects and creates something nice to look at. And yeah, I mean, I, I typically, I mean, mo most of matte paintings is, uh, is photo textures, right? But when you, uh, when you build it up, it's good to have some sort of, um, some sort of ground to it. So even, even if uh, some of the things that I will cover with the photos will be completely covered, uh, it's good to have some sort of ground because sometimes you can use different layer styles, for example, with overlay or... Uh, multiply or screen or whatever um, and and you can use less opacity as well so it kind of blends with the background so it's, it's good sometimes to do a little bit of a uh, foreground of, of work before uh, before putting on the, the the photo textures but you can you can put on the, the textures immediately as well because then you can continue working from there and all these photos are I mean it's, it's both my own photos that I've taken uh, in my travels but uh, the one that you see here is from Noah Bradley's pack. Um, that's also something I usually usually do. Just you know buy packs from from people and um, and use them because they're that's what they're for. You know people put them up there to for us to use them. And she's using soft light here as the layer style, blending it in a bit, and then just continuing with a normal layer over it. So if I have soft soft light under. Uh, I mean, so like on top of the mountain, I, I, I typically make, create an, a new layer and then keep it at normal and then just continue painting normally, like I'm doing now. Just 
just browsing through some photos. I typically just import whatever, really, uh, that kind of fits the, the, um, the mood, I guess, and um, preferably fits the, the perspective as well, too, because um, you, you can get very good happy accidents where, you know, you don't, you don't know what, what's going to come out of, um, of the result. Like now, I have no idea if this if this will work, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So as I said before, um, matte paintings are usually created for uh, for movies and and games and and things like that of that nature because it's it allows for a very cheap and and. Um, you know, easy to manipulate a background, backplates for, for the movies. If you do 3D or actually shoot something, it costs a lot more money and it's way harder to, <clears throat> to fix afterwards. But if you have a painting, if you, if you ask someone to do a matte painting, it will look equally as good because it's, uh, it, it's photorealistic. And, um, and you can keep it at several layers. So let's say we have the background in one layer, like the, um, the mountain and the sky, perhaps, uh, the mountains in the background there, and then the bridge, they're all three different layers, and then the, the part in front of here is another layer. Um, and then we can have the clouds on their own layer, and so on. That, that means we can later on just um, animate that and make it look like really, you know, with parallax, um, make it look like it's actually uh, a 3D scene. That's a very common production technique that they use in movies and games. <coughs> now just fixing up the, the bridge there. Not really sure what it is. Um, as I said before, this is just a tutorial, so I'm not really thinking that much of where this will be or trying to make it perfect or something like that. It's just to show you that it it's good to to do both photos and um, and painting as well at the same time. Uh, it's it's not cheating at all. Many people think that using photos is like okay, but you're not painting or something like that. Um, but I mean, if it speeds up your process and if it makes it look good, if you can get your creativity going and everything goes well, I mean, what what what's what's the harm in that? There is none. Now just making that those elements uh, more pronounced. I kind of like that. Looks aggressive and wild. You can try that too, using a lot of different layer styles and things like that. That's how you learn Photoshop, really, and, and how you learn what, what works and what doesn't work. You just try things out. There are so many tools and so many things you can do in Photoshop that kind of presents itself later on when you try it out yourself. I still don't know, like, I don't know, you know, 80% of, of Photoshop, even if I'm, I'm quite proficient in it. There's so much more to do here. Um, okay, maybe not 80%, but there's a lot that I still don't know about Photoshop, and I'm learning new things every time, so. Yeah, and I'm keeping, you know, changing around the, the colors and the tone, the color balance. Right now I'm just using hue saturation, um, changing up the, the color there of the, of the hillsides. Testing some other photos, seeing if, if that works better than the, the ones that are already there. And I never forget to look at the navigator because that's very important. That kind of tells me the entire composition and it's, it's, it's something I look at a lot. Yeah, I kind of don't like that um, sort of uh, cliff there. I thought it was too bul bulgy, so now I want to change it up to something more, maybe sci-fi or something like that, like an interesting design. So I'm trying these arches thing, this arch thing here. And I'm just painting over the, the sky, the sky texture that's behind. That's okay, because then I can just use something else in front later or just paint it realistically later. And I'm keeping the lighting, keeping that in mind, how, how the light would look there. 
yeah, doing um, showing there that the light is where where it hits, and then in the navigator, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, that's how how it would look, um, even if it was super detailed and super realistic. It doesn't matter. Uh, the composition is the what, is what matters the most right now. <clears throat> And there are varying degrees of matte paintings. Um, you have you, you you have both this um, this this matte painting that that is used in actual productions where where you have like real uh, background elements that are completely painted. Uh, for example, Lord of the Rings or Avatar or something. They have these back plates where the the heroes or whatever are moving in front of them, and it looks realistic. But Matte paintings can also be used as just regular concepts, so you're just using matte painting techniques to make something more realistic or speed up your process to better create a concept that you want to show your director or anyone in your you know, team or, or whatever it is, like you, you, can, you can use your photos to your advantage. Some people like only painting regularly, but I don't know. I, I do both. I think that using photos is, is cool. And this is also a pretty cool thing that you can do that you see me doing now. Um, you can start with a dark color and then you start, you, you put on some lighter color above it. That'll create some sort of plateau effect. And there's some cracks here. Important to not make everything look uni unified. I'm not sure what's up with that um, recording software. It sort of removes the um, the brush size, I guess. It's kind of weird. Yeah, just adding in some some more texture and lighting. And here I'm just doing the, um, I don't know, I had an idea to to make some sort of sci-fi, you know, um, energy field or something. Uh, and I'm using linear dodge with an overlay layer. So linear dodge is on my brush and then, yeah, I changed it actually to overlay, uh, to linear dodge on both. Oh yeah, no, I, I made another layer above it. So it looks like the, the mountain is glowing. It's kind of like a power source or something. And maybe those that, that bridge thing there is like a it's part of a mine. Like they they were mining here. You know, it's it's just fun to try out some different ideas that you have. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be silly. It can be whatever. I mean, you're just practicing. This is practice for me too. It was quite a while ago since I made like a purely sort of matte painting sort of thing, but. I use it a lot, as I showed you in the beginning of this uh, tutorial. Yeah, now I'm just changing the composition to see if, if it actually works better. Because I thought it was a little bit too high up, the arc there, the arch. So just warping it and... It's kind of dangerous to do that in uh, this far ahead, but yeah, it's good to try. I decide to, to not not do anything you know I, I try this like I duplicate the layer and then see if I can use both somehow but I end up not not using it just going back to how it was and I mean it's, it's kind of um, uh, deviating a lot from what we started with with the sketch um, it was more like vertical with the sketch. It kind of had this um, more frog-like view, which I, I kind of liked more than what I have right now. But sometimes it, it just evolves like that, you know. That's okay. That just means that you have to do another painting, or I have to do another painting later, where I'm using the, what I liked about the first one. Because you learn every time you do something new. And that's what I'm doing every time I'm doing the even even when I'm doing these tutorials, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching myself things as well. 
that I, you know, don't think about when I'm doing these stuff just um, per autom automatic, you know. And I should stop saying, you know, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so now I'm just uh, changing the color balance, making it more yellowish, lush. It's a bit hard to, to get this acidic uh, green uh, properly. It's easier with a more yellowish tone. Looks more tropical too. And I'm just using a bra um, um, what's it called? Um, cloud brush. Put some more mm, definition for for the for the rocks and push things back a bit. And I switch up the the brushes sometimes just to give a bit a bit, a bit of texture. But most of the time I just use uh, very few brushes. Like you know, ninety five percent of the time I. I just use um, regular brushes like the chalk brush or the one I'm using right now. I think that's the chalk brush uh, or uh, some other kind of common uh, texture brushes and the soft brushes, of course. But sometimes I use special brushes that I have in the pack as well for, for the Evident um, brush pack. But as you can see, it's mostly just regular brushes, like the soft brush and the chalk brush. I love the chalk brush, it's a really good one. That's also something I kind of regret a little bit, that it got a bit too hazy, this picture. But that's okay. Next time I just remember to not overdo the haziness. Um, but it, it looks okay, I think. If I would spend another four hours on this, uh, you know, a full a full day's uh, worth of work, mm, it, it would be much better, of course. But that's why. Well, that's why, why we um, why we do this. I mean, we we, we learn and uh, we do these quicker sort of things. I mean, even if this is three or four hours uh, long video, um, or sorry, a long uh, painting process. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still not that long, you know. I guess I can speak a little bit of myself as well. Uh, I just came back to Sweden. Um, I, um, I've been around the world <laughs> for about two years now. been traveling around, learning a lot and working and doing a lot of things. I spent about one to a few months in each country. Uh, I was in, in the Himalayas, in Nepal. That was just amazing. Walked in the mountains for about two weeks. And I lived half a year in Taiwan, learned some Mandarin and traveled around there. And then Japan was absolutely fantastic as well. The Philippines was a month there. Uh, Malaysia, Thailand. Also, I uh, went down to Australia and New Zealand and um, been working as a concept artist and illustrator and composer and also building up this uh, education company that hosts this uh, little, uh, these little tutorials now, Evident, which you should check out if you want to learn more about uh, design and painting and stuff like that. I have a cool course coming up on, on painting. So yeah, I think you should check up some uh, matte painters. Uh, you can you can check Dylan Cole's uh, matte painting. Um, you know his work. Uh, he's been doing a lot of work on the on some very big uh, movies like Lord of the Rings and Avatar, Tron I think as well. It's very cool stuff, and you get very inspired by his work. In, and there you can see as well how you know you, you probably saw those those movies and. You, you probably didn't realize that those were actually paintings. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the backgrounds is, is just paintings. Once I learned about matte painting and sh started doing it myself and, and checking out more about it, I realized that there's a lot of matte paintings everywhere in, in a lot of productions. 
That's something you can do. Just keep an eye out for that. And now I'm just um, copying the textures. That's something you can do. You can press V and I think it's shift. Um, and then just drag it. V, v makes it, it brings up the, the move tool. And if you press shift or, or maybe alt, I think, I think it's shift. Um, you, um, it actually copies it. So it duplicates it uh, onto a new layer. And here I'm just fixing up the, um, uh, the levels, making it a bit brighter. So it looks a little bit further away. Just erasing a little bit of the vegetation here as well. Needs to be a bit brighter, I think. The rocks. So yeah, this this is just a, an introduction to matte painting. Um, it's I'm not really explaining everything that I'm doing, and all the the um, the neat tricks you can do, like this thing, for example, where you you can take out the sky or something like that. There's a lot you can do with this um, using the channels like removing the blue channel, or red channel or something like that. Uh, you can get perfect crops from from any any image like this. You can see here, uh, they have different different contrasts and stuff like that. So I, I will do videos on that uh, specific techniques for how to, how to do these things. This is just like an introduction, like the same thing with my speed painting uh, introduction, where I'm I was just showing you guys how to, or what speed painting is and how, how to, how, how that could uh, help you work. Uh, you know, in the beginning of this this um, painting, I started out with the speed painting, and um, but yeah, I, I will continue to show some some cool uh, techniques and and stuff like that. So you can stay tuned for that. And also, I, I love listening to your guys' um, um, suggestions. Like, what do you want to learn more about? And um, if you, if you have anything that you you're struggling with or uh, something that you would like to learn more about you just write a comment or or you know whatever you can also join the the facebook group that we have the evident design facebook group uh, you can share your work and you can discuss things and, and we also have um uh some challenges challenges and stuff like that that we could use oh here comes the ambulance yeah the hospital is just up here Sol Grenska. Shout out to all my Swedish friends out there. <laughs> Maybe you understood that. Now I just wanted to add some more water, I guess. Maybe add some more dynamics. And if this was in a movie, um, this this waterfall would be on its own layer, so you could actually animate it. And the same with the waterfall to the left, uh, to the right there, um, and um, the 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 power source, I guess, of the mountain. And then I'm doing some birds later on that would also be on its own layer. So the animator could actually just animate everything and make it look really cool. And I'm just blending it in, making a little cliff here. It's important to have both soft and hard edges. So it's not only soft or only hard. There I'm just um, copying what I did before. That's also pretty good to do. I mean, it doesn't look obviously copied from, from the same painting but it kind of unifies it, I guess. Adding some clouds here. Again, not trying to overdo it. <laughs> but this is typically very misty around waterfalls for obvious reasons. Yeah, look at this, I'm really overdoing it. <laughs> oh yeah, this is something that you could do. Um, you can go to Google and go to images and then uh, in the search criterions, I guess, or the tools there, you could uh, press tools and then usage rights and then change the usage rights to uh, labeled for reuse and modification, I think it's called. Uh, that, that means that you can, you can use those photos commercially for free uh, without having to give anyone any credit or anything. You just you know download them into your stock photos and just use them on whatever you want. Like, like this image here, it was labeled for reuse and... I could just grab it right off of Google, and it's all good. But if you look at the big, the big movies, uh, uh, matte paintings, uh, they're, they're kind of flawless. You know, they you can't tell what's painted and what's not. It just looks so good. You just go to Google and search Dylan Cole and, and check out his work. Um, it looks like three D or or a real image or something. 
because he's he's using the the photos from like he, st he starts with the photo from the actual uh, filming scene if they filmed outside like Lord of the Rings for example uh, he, he used um, the parts from Mount Doom up in the, the North Island of New Zealand and then he adds on his own textures to to make it blend perfectly so so it fits very nicely like mo most of the Mount Doom scenes and um, and the uh, Rivendell and all these elven stuff and Lord of the Rings that's all that's all painted on different layers and stuff so they can animate it you <clears throat> move further away you lose a lot of the dynamic uh, it gets way more flat like I showed you in the in the beginning of this this uh, tutorial but yeah I'm trying to um, trying to make it less dynamic and kind of make it fit into the, to the environment there and then making some more lighting on top there so it doesn't look like it's very you know sunlit like it is in, in the original photo so tr try to make your your job easier by choosing good photos that fit with perspective with lighting even with color is, is good too it is a good help it's very very cloudy scene uh, it is a, a matte painting tutorial where I'm, I'm showing you these techniques, kind of like an overview of what matte painting is. Uh, but I could have thought more about the design aspect of all of this before, you know, going into uh, rendering it out and all that. Uh, and that that's actually in the beginning, like I talk about in my speed painting tutorial, uh, the introduction to speed painting. You can check that out as well. Um, it's basically that it's important to have the first stage of the of the painting as as um, proper as you as you want it to be in your head because if you if you don't have that properly set in the beginning you're going to change a lot of things later and you're going to lose a lot of time that you've worked on maybe details or uh, things like that so the earlier you can do the design choices the better and then later on just comes for um, for uh, rendering it out everything also part of why I think that you should do that in the beginning. But it's okay, you know, you, you learn. I learn. Notice the, the clouds. You can see here I've taken a lot of inspiration from how clouds sort of make these things look big. And I do that technique a lot where I just lasso out and uh, do these cloud textures on the bottom of the rocks and then notice also how the the color variation and the, and the level variation is because the more you study that the, the better you become at painting and the begin the better you become at um, uh, rendering things rendering out your ideas and that that's what's fun about painting is that you have these cool ideas or concepts and you actually later on will get the ability to to paint them, you know, to, to make them into reality, and that's that's a great feeling, and that's what's fun when you when you become um, when you create something that you you can be proud of, and eventually maybe even make money off it, you know. Uh, that's what we're trying to do here at Devenant. We're trying to teach people that they can they they can actually make a living. I mean, that's how I've done done it. Um, I didn't start out as a pro, you know. I I, I just started out because I thought painting was fun and. I've I've been drawing and painting all my life, um, but then these past about um, seven years or so, I've been I've been getting a lot of work in in many different fields and stuff. So it's definitely possible. It's just about practicing and following what you think is fun, and that's why I'm doing these photo these um, tutorials because it's 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 fun to also teach and give people some more hope, <laughs> I guess, and then give them tips and stuff. And it's really fun to hear your um, all your critique and your comments and what you want to learn more and, and stuff like that. So, like a strokey brush. Oh, here, here I'm tr trying to change up the design to make it look a little bit cooler, like more sci-fi or like ancient sci-fi or something. Um, I guess it gives it a, a pretty cool effect. It looks like intelligent design, not just some uh, very old dwarven bridge or something. And later on, I'll, I'll do it even more sci-fi, kind of um, mixing sci-fi with um, 
this old stony sort of thing. So I, I kind of thought that that was a bit too much there. Mm, I, I like the texture, but it, it was just, it doesn't, it didn't really help the image. Um, also something I should have done in the beginning to have the design uh, more there. Because I went into this not really knowing exactly what to do and um, I mean, I, I knew about approximately what I wanted to do and I, that's why I did the sketch, but I think it's important to do a better sketch, I guess. Just doing some color balance. Um, and as you can see, I'm, I'm often just um, flat, flattening the image, so I'm, I'm making a new layer where the entire image is just right there, so I don't really care that much about the, the layers anymore. So now I'm, you see I'm just painting right on the, the entire layer where I flattened it. Um, and the, the shortcut for that is Control shift alt and then I think it's number four, so... All right, no, it's E, sorry. Control shift alt and E uh, creates a new layer, uh, flattens everything with a new layer, so you can just paint right on top. Because I'm not that big on having a bunch of layers because then I can find things and... Um, it, it typically um, creates more problems than solves, I think. But sometimes when it's like big stuff, I, I definitely do uh, up to maybe 20 or 30 layers. And for, for cover albums, I do a lot more because then I know uh, I can change some design things and uh, also with texts and, and effects and stuff like that that the client maybe doesn't want. But for concept, it's, it's a different thing because then you're just painting, I guess. Here I'm trying the mixer brush. Just darkening down everything. I thought it was a bit too washed out. Just selecting the over top here and then changing a little bit of the color. I wanted more red there so it looks more like a sunset. And then keep the lush sort of tropical feel under there. There's something called like how to paint snow mountains. Um, but that tutorial is very outdated and I will make a new one with how to create really good snow mountains. Um, and, and in there, I'm, I'm showing you how to make a texture brush uh, using this effect, uh, this technique. So I'll create a new one though to, to make it better. Mm. But as you can see here, it's, it's looking really good there to the left. Just about adjusting everything. Uh, testing to see if I can find the better composition, but yeah. That's something you do very early, not this late, I guess. I mean, you could do it now, but yeah. And I think it, it gets a little bit too washed out there with the light. Um, should have planned it a little bit better as well, making it not so washed out, I guess. Because I, I like having more contrast there up with the um, uh, in the focal points. Now I'm just doing a layer here, linear dodge, um, my typical uh, effect here, making some god rays shine across the valley there. But that that's the other part of of what what I use mapping techniques for. Uh, I mean, most of my paintings aren't matte paintings. They're they're just regular paintings uh, together sometimes with uh, different sort of techniques. I use both 3D and uh, photos and, and things like that. So my matte painting uh, techniques are basically just used for making things look good, uh, speeding up the process, and yeah. Like you, you can see here, I mean, it looks pretty good there with the, with the rock to the left there and the, the forest and stuff. I could paint all of that as well, but it takes a long time. Sometimes I do paint that because that's what that's the effect I want to have. Uh, but, but most of the time for concepts and for uh, covers and stuff like that, people like the realistic look and it speeds up the process for me. So why not just do it, you know, cool effect that I wanted to do with the um, uh, glowing energy things. So it looks like this entire place is sort of um, imb imbued with uh, this energy source that this mining place or something was um, taking out of. So I'm duplicating the layer and then going up to blur. 
and then doing a little bit of blur above it so it looks like it's glowing. That's a cool thing you can do as well. Whenever you have some shiny things that you want, you can just uh, duplicate it, make it linear dodge or uh, screen, and then you go up to filter and then you blur it with a Gaussian blur. Here I'm adding it to the mountain too to make it look like that's the source, I guess, um, of the entire thing. Sort of like the Metroid Prime Phazon. Phazon. Yeah, it's been a very long video. <laughs> if you're still here, congratulations. Now, I really hope that you've learned something. <clears throat> but in the future, I'll do more videos with um, uh, proper techniques on what I'm doing and stuff like that. So this is just an, an introduction to, um, to matte painting uh, using photos. But something I do a lot as well is, is using 3D. Uh, 3D is very good to use. It creates perfect perspective and perfect lighting as well if you, if you spend some time on setting up that scene and learning more about 3D. But yeah, I have a lot of, have a lot of things coming up for you guys this, this year, uh, 2017. Um, I'm making a new layer and then making it overlay. Uh, I think it's pressing Alt or yeah, Alt and then clicking that new layer and then making overlay and fill with neutral color and add noise then blur it a little bit and decrease the opacity. That adds a little bit of a film uh, grain to it, I guess. It kind of makes everything fit together. Like adding a little bit of noise to make it look like it's the same sort of film. And then just finishing off with the um, with the birds. Birdie, birdie. changing around the shadows, midtones, and highlights. That changes the color in different value ranges. It's important to, to get that knowledge as well. Just doing, yeah, I actually don't want to make this uh, unsharp mask. I remove that later. Fixing up some small color stuff here. Adding a little bit of um, color variation also makes it look a little bit more cinematic and not perfectly painted or something. Just with a color layer, 7% um, opacity, so it's not too much. So yeah, we're ending up our um, tutorial here. I hope you learned something good. Uh, matte painting is a fantastic um, uh, process technique that you could use for your own concepts and uh, maybe in the future you will do some some cool things with the uh, actual productions and stuff so it's good to have that um, that skill set with you and uh, as you can see this is a finished painting uh, it's like um I don't know sunset or maybe even morning with these mists around and uh, I spent most of the time on the on the bottom part uh, it only took about like three or four hours I mean it's it's not too too long and I, I didn't care that much about uh, making it perfect but yeah I hope that you learned something good about this and um, I hope that you will try it out yourself so see you in the next videos where I give you some more techniques um, all right see you around cheers